एस एम बी कनेक्ट इंडिया लार्जेस्ट इंटीग्रेटेड सोल्यूशन प्लेटफॉर्म विच कनेक्ट एस एम ईज एंड ऑन्टरप्रन्योर अक्रॉस द नेशन डिस्पाइट सेवरल गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव एंड प्रोग्राम इंडियन ऑन्टरप्रन्योर एंड एस एम ईज आर स्टिल फेसिंग मेनी चैलेंजेस आर मिशन इज टू हेल्प दैम ओवरकम दो बाय एक्टिंग एज अ कैटलिस्ट इन प्रोपेलिंग बिजनेस ग्रोथ promoting innovation technological advancement and digitalization and making them successful global players we have devised five pillars to stimulate productivity and growth of smes start manage expand series annual knowledge event series organized concurrently in different cities of india atweta to recognize and celebrate women entrepreneurs of india accelerate Entrepreneur awards to honor excellent and accelerating businesses. Listing services provide a platform to expand digital footprint and customer outreach. Advisory services help SMEs deal with industry specific challenges and accelerate growth. Nationally recognized and well acclaimed in India, SMB Connect is an industry pioneer that supports SMEs. by providing strategic and innovative end to end solutions together let's help small businesses overcome all odds and succeed because small can be big a particular mission to assist the entire exim fraternity to have a bridge between uh, the uh, government of fraternity uh, with this all other platforms marketing challenges and uh, related to the any issue and now we are in the 22nd year of operation and with the help and assistance and support of all you members ship to mr vinod in a past we have crossed these journeys and today in this uh, pandemic situation as you all are aware it's our first and foremost endeavor to be as a one group to do our own with the joint venture of the different things think positive and and keep the entire energy on a positive side so that once situation of covid 19 is over how can we run this our businesses i know each and every person as as one date is on a step and still as the business is almost uh, stop across the world and we are the major from the msme are facing a lot towards uh, this uh, pandemic but this time is also going to be over dear fox don't uh, get upset yourself don't uh, leave your mind to be just an ideal be creative on a day to day basis let us do something uh, out of the box think on your own line of business what you were doing in the past study that entire philosophy and from that philosophy and your just divert your mind into other things what best you can do after this the god has given you a time of refreshing this entire thing uh, just uh, enjoy that time give a creative view and looking to all this thing today we have kept a, a new webinar with the help of this smb connect as i said what is the smb connect platform itself is and along with that we have a very good faculty who is a good uh, marketing and orator who is going to lead us towards uh, this our mitigating the adversity and adaptability and your yeah, this today's faculty mr vinod will take you a very nice uh, guidelines of around 35 40 minutes on how we can uh, set our mind into a different thing thank you all and i am just uh, requesting uh, this uh, faculty to transfer to and uh, come on online mr vinod please yes sir very good morning to everyone morning can you see me very, very good morning hi uh, thank you so much uh, mr shah 
Uh, I think Sandeep and you guys to go through, and then probably you can give me an opportunity to speak to everyone. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, let me just uh, introduce to Mr. Vinod K. Pandita. He is a successful uh, entrepreneur. He has uh, been uh, uh, in the consulting business for the last 25 years. He is a self-started. Uh, he has a, a mid-sized management consulting firm called Perception Management Consulting Private Limited. Uh, he's the founder, director, and the CEO of that organization, and he's been uh, providing a lot of consulting and management uh, support, uh, doing a lot of turnout, uh, turnovers of uh, uh, multiple organizations, and has done a uh, uh, fabulous job to a lot of uh, small organizations and help them turn around their uh, their, their their organization in a, in a, in a, and, and grow their organization in a better way. So let's uh, understand from Mr. Vinod uh, how uh, today we are in a situation where things are not in the right uh, pace the way we are looking at how we can change that and adopt to to grow our organization over to mr vinod yeah thank you very much i hope uh, you can see my screen now uh, yeah thank you Yes. Yeah, all set. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sandeepan, and thank you, Mr. Shah, for this great opportunity. Uh, I hope everyone can see me. Sandeepan, can you see me? Am I am I uh, visible? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. All right, all right. So, uh, very good morning, uh, everyone. I'm basically right now uh, located in Gurgaon uh, at, my, at my residence. So a very happy morning to all of you. Uh, this is a great opportunity for for me to really share with you some of the some of the important uh, futuristic goals, you know, which we all businessmen have to have to set for ourselves. So first of all, uh, I hope uh, that you have been you have been doing good during these forty five days of lockdown. Uh, you actually have to take care of your health, which we all know, and we have been always listening to all the advisories of government of India. And I hope that you are taking care of yourself with all the precautions and taking every step uh, towards making sure that you know this this virus doesn't uh, spread any further. You know, and we as responsible citizens of the country uh, take every bit of our uh, you know effort to make sure that you know we take care of this pandemic to really get controlled. So friends, so uh, today we are going to have this uh, session on mitigating adversity with adaptability. See, what is important in business is uh, adversities do come. It is not only this kind of crisis. In businesses, there are different kinds of crises we face normally. So it's not that every year or every quarter, uh, businesses are always good. Uh, I think this is the time when the business has uh, got the hit because of some external crisis. Normally, we always suffer from our own internal crisis, majorly, because uh, businesses, especially uh, micro, small, and medium businesses, uh, they have their own habits of doing things. So they are actually um, you know, uh, faced by internal challenges more than external challenges. And that is what every business owner should recognize. I think that's very important. If you don't recognize your internal issues, if you don't recognize your internal challenges, if you don't uh, start re reinventing yourself, introspecting yourself, uh, the external environment does matter, but then it should, uh, it should not matter so much because if you see that there are certain organizations, there are certain businesses who thrive when you don't even survive. So what is the difference? What is the difference between you not doing well and other people are doing well you know, across the road. It is only because those people have made certain actions, they have made certain plans, and they are actually taking certain actions, and they are actually aware of what they're doing. So I think this is a great learning for us. This is a very conscious uh, time, you know, when for the last one and a half months that we have been under lockdown and everything is stopped. Virtually everything is stopped, no revenue, no sales. But look at those people who have chosen a certain uh, certain businesses like essential services, they never stopped even for an hour in the last 45 days, like grocery shops, milk, milk uh, suppliers, uh, vegetable suppliers, or maybe healthcare mass suppliers, you know, who have evolved 
in the last so many uh, days. So you can see, uh, you know, you have to be either relevant uh, or you have to make yourself relevant to the to the market. That's something which is very important. So today, uh, when we say adversity, adversity is when we are hit by a crisis and we don't know what to what to do. And it can be an economic, it can be any kind of adversity. And then how do we mitigate it with adaptability? Normally, what we say, we say adaptability to opportunity. Yes, opportunity may not, you may not be able to see the opportunity today, but opportunities will definitely come and they're always there. You know, it depends on like, for example, there are many medical healthcare professionals who got into uh, some businesses, you know, which they could survive during these times and they're they are serving the community. They're serving, serving the, the society. The adaptability is that you have to adapt and adopt the new practices and the situation you have to be adaptable. So uh, I have got five objectives for you, which you should, uh, uh, you should expect from this session. One is that uh, how to maintain productivity in these times of crisis. So as Mr. Shah just said that, you know, you don't have to sit idle. You have to be creative. You have to be out of box. Definitely, you have to make sure that every day is productive, even if you don't have anything to do. But that is the that is the art of keeping yourself busy and uh, being productive. You know, because human beings are so adaptable in the world. This is the only species on this planet who is the most adaptable, uh, you know, species on the planet. So I think uh, you have to maintain the productivity. Second is how to plan future of uncertainty. Now we don't know what's going to happen even after these this lockdown. You know, because Things are a little gloomy, but uh, we have to be ready and plan for future of uncertainty. The third one is that we have to look at the business strategies to recover from recession. So we have to change ourselves. We have to move ourselves. We have to take certain decisions. We have to create certain strategies for our business because this business is actually taking care of our lifestyle. It is taking care of our family, our employees, our stakeholders our debtors, you know, everybody. Uh, the next one is immediate actions by MSME owners before we recover from COVID. So what do we do? Like, for example, when I did the the previous um, uh, couple of uh, webinars on the same platform on SMB Connect with some other people, um, there we said that, okay, 15 days, 30 days. Now it is 45 days. Maybe probably this month is already gone. So the entire quarter is gone. So we don't know what is going to happen in the next quarter. But we have to plan for it. We have to take certain immediate actions and we have to plan for future. And I would recommend that one of the objectives of this session is that I would force you. I will, I would, I would, uh, uh, you know, enforce and empower you guys to really take a hundred days challenge uh, going forward or maybe a little longer, maybe 300 day challenge or maybe 150 day challenge. But at least H1, which is April, May, June, July, August and September, because April has already gone by. We are in the month of May now. So June, July, August, September. So we have four months in hand. So what are we going to do in these four months, even if there is no sales? So we have to just prepare for that. So think for the worst and be prepared for the best. So there are three things, you know, which uh, all of us uh, as business entrepreneurs, business owners have to go through. That first of all, we have to focus on how do we survive these, these testing times. And then we also have to think of reviving it. And then we will all thrive, that's for sure, because we are going to, we are going to uh, overcome this challenge because this is an external threat. And probably if God willing, uh, you know, if we control it well, so we, because there are some units, there are some businesses which are already open yesterday, day before yesterday, but we have to be very careful. But uh, these are the three steps which I would uh, emphasize that you have to first of all think of survival, how do we survive? How do we take care of our immediate expenses, of our family expenses, our employees' expenses, our, our uh, you know, close expenses? Then we have to revive our business. And then we have to try. There is some background sound, so I request that if you can just mute yourself, please, if you don't mind. Then, then please, please. All right. So I would I would just focus on this. Uh, I would request all of your attention to this, this uh, slide. Uh, there are two sides of our personality. One is the personal aspect and another is the professional or business aspect. So uh, what we need to focus on on a personal aspect is that we have to keep the positive mindset. That's very important. Always keep 
uh, feed your mind with positive news feed your mind with with good things uh, second is take care of your physical health take care of your mental health because it is very easy for for human beings uh, to get frustrated to get irritated and probably lose that mental balance and maybe get into depression so friends because as entrepreneurs we have more responsibility than anybody else that we have to have a very strong mental health and we have to work on it by making sure that our mindset is positive and it actually takes positive feedback from from rest of the world fourth one is learn new skills you know and for yourself as well as for your organization and for your teams new skills can be anything it can be it skills it can be management skills it can be some technological skills it can be actually uh, you know logging on to these kind of webinars and having zoom calls or probably having uh, adopting some new technology uh, the fifth one is the most important in my perspective is courage and resilience so this is very important so you have to be very courageous and you have to be resilient you know to face these challenging times on the business side what you have to focus on is that I, I, I emphasize on these five things. Uh, one is business leadership. You have, because you are a leader, so you have to lead the business. You cannot say that I'm lost, I'm, I'm gone, I'm, I, I can't do it. You can't say that because uh, even if you, are, you feel weak, if, even if you feel uh, depressed, but you don't have to show it. You have to, you have to fake your uh, face till you make it. So because everybody is looking up at you, as an entrepreneur, this is your greatest responsibility. Being a leader, you have to lead your business. Second is you have to reinvent your business model. If you think that you know uh, you are not relevant to the current situation or maybe future situation, probably you have to seriously look into the business modeling and you have to reinvent at some level. Third one is capital restructuring. You have to look at how you can actually uh, create cash reservoirs. You know for these kind of uh, these kind of adversity uh, and these kind of times of crisis the fourth one is strategic planning there are four p's for product place price you have to just see that how you can market yourself and how you strategically can plan your uh, business in the entirety and the fifth one is that you have to keep your teams empowered like for example we are at home we always talk to our family members who are junior to us maybe our kids we always tell them that you know okay fine you know you are at home you have to take care of your studies as well you can't waste too much of time Similarly, with the same spirit, you know, you have to talk to your teams as well, even if they are at their homes. So these are the two sides of our personality. One is on the business side, one is on the personal side. Please take care of these 10 things, and I'm sure that you will actually overcome the, the, uh, the mindset issues, you know, if you anyone is facing. Uh, these are different kinds of crises which are faced by our businesses uh, now and then every year. You know, it, you know, every anybody can can actually uh, face these kind of uh, crisis. And pandemic is one crisis which, in the lifetime, probably in the last hundred years, you might might have heard different news uh, items. But I'm again repeating it for everybody. So this is one of the kind. But then just imagine that if you are a manufacturer and you had a equipment failure, sometimes how did you react to that situation? If you had a supply chain fa failure, sometime in the in the in the in the past how did you uh, how did you uh, respond to that and how did you react to that so it's not something which is for the first time but it is getting a little longer it is stretching a little bit more but i think we need to look at the different kinds of crisis and make sure that we are ready for that so there are there are four outage scenarios in case of any kind of challenge which we see uh, in the previous which we saw in the previous slide so what are the four outages? Just can't do anything whatsoever. You just can't, you just can't uh, produce. You just can't, uh, uh, you know, sell. You just can't market. You can't do anything. So when the business comes to a halt, there are four possibilities of outages or risks, I would say. One is a site outage. For example, we are not able to go to our offices. This is one of the one of the outage second is uh, there may be a technology and communication outage you know for example if your if your it system in your business uh, breaks down or maybe there is some ransomware these are these are different scenarios but this is not the challenge right now because we are we are global uh, globally world is actually fighting a certain pandemic which has got a site outage personal outage and vendor outage which is more uh, 
uh, you know, relevant in these times of crisis. So these are the four kinds of outages and risks which any business, a small and medium business, is going to. And we are we are facing these outages right now. So I would like to just share with you that uh, this is how. Uh, the whole uh, business, uh, uh, you know, restoration, response, and recovery management system or business continuity system looks like. Because this session is about business continuity, that means that we have to make sure that our business continues. Though business continuity is a preemptive approach, it's a proactive approach. It is not something when a, a crisis hits us and then we have to start thinking of business continuity. But this crisis did not give us time. This time, pandemic, this worldwide pandemic did not give us not even a week's time to really prepare ourselves. So, which is for businesses very difficult to make sure that we have a business continuity plan. But nevertheless, we have to prepare for this. Now, if you look at the business, is all about time versus performance. Uh, on x axis, you can see time, a line, and there is a on y axis, you can see the performance. Normally, what happens is there's a, there's a normal activity on the left side, if you see. And then when you were working in a very normal situation and normal activities were happening in your business, so what happened, an incident happened on 17th of March or 24th of March or 20th of March, 2020. This incident hit us and Janta curfew told us to stay at home. Though the activities stopped about a week, 10 days in advance, but this incident happened and the whole normal activity shut down and now we are in this gap. If you can see, uh, there is a gap between uh, this dotted line to the next dotted line. So this is the gap. Initially, we thought 30 days. Now we are saying maybe 60 days, probably 90 days. We don't know. But what are we going to do? So the moment this COVID-19 situation is going to uh, overcome, there will be something called the layer one or level one restoration, which for some businesses has already happened on Monday onwards. When lockdown 3.0 started some of the businesses already started restoration so this is level one rest restoration then there is a level two restoration which will take some time probably it will take another six months or maybe three months for some people or maybe one and a half months for some month some people because it's all about your business it's not about somebody else's business so you have to look at for example when you look at your personal health you have to look at your your own company's health also so level two or layer two restoration is a normal activity. So this is, this is there are four R's if you can see, you have to respond, recover, resume, and restore. So this is basically all about uh, business continuity. Now look at this, how it, how it actually has to be understood by all of us. I will just share with you uh, some of the terminologies in business continuity. Uh, the first one is MCA, which is mission critical activity. Now all these things you have to do, during time is in your company so please don't don't uh, don't get panicky about that there's, there is no sales let's forget about it for the for the time being uh, because you can't handle it because it's a global pandemic this is something which is not not only your your uh, crisis it's everybody's crisis so next one is called empty pod this is called maximum tolerable period of disruption this is where we are going through right now we are going through uh, the the empty pod right now which is the maximum tolerable of uh, period of disruption that means we have to decide okay for next three months i'm not going to the office i'm going to revive my list of customers i'm going to revive my systems i'm going to revive my business uh, model i'm going to revive my business plan i'm going to work on my financial arrangements i'm going to relook at my three years balance sheet this is the time where you have to actually take that uh, system you know, in 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 in, in uh, understanding that. Then third one is recovery time objective, which is called as RTO, which is basically, for example, if the lockdown is for next three months, then when are we going to start certain minimum activities during this time? Like, for example, I as a consultant or SMB Connect as a networking platform, we don't have any sales right now. So, for example, for the last one and a half months. But trust me, I have spent more than hundred hours of webinars in the last forty-five days. 100 hours or maybe 120 hours of webinars has given me so much of enrichment of my knowledge and i have interacted with so many people i've interacted with more than 500 people across the board and i have been able to get exposed to a lot of people so this is something which was consciously done 
सो दिस इज कॉल्ड रिकवरी टाइम ऑब्जेक्टिव हमारे इमीडिएट ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है हमारे उद्देश्य क्या हमें इमीडिएटली क्या करना चाहिए आई विल बी यूजिंग सम हिंदी ऑल्सो इन बिटवीन आई होप दैट शुड ऑल्सो हेल्प एवरी वन दोर्थ वन इज मिनिमम बिजनेस कॉन्टिन्यूटी ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट मीन्स दैट before rto happens these objectives what exactly minimum services can we restore you know in our business so this is where you have to think and probably you have to be relevant to the market and the fifth one is recovery point objective which is uh, whatever has been lost whatever business you have lost in 3 months 1 and 1/2 months 3 months 4 months how are you going to recover that and when you are going to recover that so these are the five terminologies which i thought i should uh, share with you now look at this the same graph how it looks like now you see uh, when we talked about uh, the normal activity the incident happened and then this is the rto which is the recovery time objective then you have to take make sure that you are going to do something and then this is mbco and then layer 1 restoration layer 2 etc and then probably after 6 months will be on a normal activity or maybe after 3 months from the janta curfew we are going to be in a normal activity maybe 1 and 1/2 months ahead or maybe from tomorrow you can start your business if if you have that kind of a business which you can start as i said there are certain people who have not stopped business for even a single day there are shopkeepers who have who have not been uh, asked to stop the business and they have been serving all the uh, all the citizens of the country so this is how it looks like so you have to resume this is called resumption of activities this is where you have to make sure that what are my uh you know recovery time objectives what are my uh you know business continuity objectives what are my restoration uh, layer one objectives how how fast and how quickly can i learn new things and how i can actually resume my activity so again i'm saying please do and utilize your time for the best use of your own business all right so there are 10 things you know which you need to understand or maybe 10 actions which you have to take for this business continuity management one is uh, the basic term like explain that is one what is uh, it is like like regard in manufacturing or trading or maybe any kind of import export business or you are a supplier to somebody how about you start branding your your company by creating videos of yourself and you say that okay i am going to work on my branding i am going to work on my my brochure i am going to work on my presentation i am going to work on my investor deck pitch i am going to work on my some uh, merger acquisition how about that so you have to basically work on those kind of things so on mission critical activities or maybe you may have to sort out your inventory for that matter i will come to that and you know, there are certain steps which i will be sharing with you the second one is define and agree the mission critical activities tasks and services you have to take the pen and paper and start writing that what are those things which in this week i'm going to do or next week i'm going to do identify them as certain activities uh, which give you revenue and there are some activities which don't give you you know revenue for example you go and uh, probably now partially you can open your unit for example or maybe you can ask one or two people to come and uh, overhaul your machines or maybe if you have an office uh, clean up your your premises or maybe uh, you know set up your uh, systems in place or maybe you can uh, work on your business uh, model or anything you can do so there are certain activities which are revenue generating activities and there are certain activities which are non revenue generating activities then you have to do something called bia which is called business impact analysis that results in determining role and responsibility of four see there are four stakeholders in your business one is customer one is vendor one is uh, the team the employees and the debtor which are the bankers so these are the four uh, uh, you know supplier and customer on one side debtors on one side and team on one side so these are the four uh, four major stakeholders you have to take care and you have to make sure that how you actually how your business is going to get impacted by these four stakeholders if your vendor uh, moves out if your team leaves you if you are not able to retain them what will happen to your business are you going to resume quickly after 3 months if these people are not around or maybe if you if you if you 
don't have a good credit rating and probably your debtors will run away your banks will not give you uh, working capital what will you do at, at that moment of time then fifth one is continuity capability that's called risk assessment you have to make sure that based on those four outages what are those uh, continuity capability uh, capabilities you have to build for your organization then comes your continuity strategy for layer one and layer two restoration which i showed you in the previous slide this one so layer one and layer two you have to fix up certain strategies that how what are we going to do to make sure that we are at layer one restoration uh, level here you know when i say when there is a empty mbco when it finishes when you start sliding up when you start growing when you start restoring your business resuming your business till that time what are the strategies you are going to follow and then you have to document your continuity plan and make sure that your team or you as director or maybe your partners take the responsibility and take the ownership of each and every continuity plan uh, objective then comes your uh, business continuity plan is to be tested you know you can actually test it by you know, by experimenting it by telling somebody okay picking up the phone and uh, making a list of all the customers and talking to each and every customer and asking them whether they are still there are they going to be with your customers three months later what is their business strategy how are they moving in these times of crisis are they going to be with you are are your suppliers going to be with you for people also and then you have to internally review this business continuity plan and finally the leadership team the management and you as the business owner can actually sign off and then document these things and this is basically these are the 10 immediate actions which you should take to make sure that you have a good and effective business continuity plan so business continuity is as good as it is it has been tested so this is this is what i always say that this is something which you have to which you have to do then comes your business impact assessment business impact assessment or analysis includes the steps uh, which I have discussed earlier, but there are certain steps like for example, you have to identify key business process and functions like marketing uh, Because sales is not happening. So uh, what are you doing on marketing? What are you doing on on inventory management? What are you doing on stores management? What are you doing on your? Uh, uh, for example, you're a trader if you are a distributor or you're a trader What are you doing with your customers your principals? Uh, what kind of contracts have you signed with them earlier and are you going to work on them or not so you have to see what is the impact going to happen i'll just give you an example uh, there is a transporter here in gurgaon and uh, he supplies uh, uh, about 40 vehicles to schools now schools are schools are shut down and his business is also uh, shut down but you know he was looking for an help that how can i recover my money from the schools because uh, you know I, there is no money uh, coming from my customers and my assets are you know, you know, it has become a liability because I have to pay to the banks. What do I do with these buses? So we just asked them, uh, asked this gentleman to really review his contract with the schools. And trust me, there was no force measure clause. He has not taken care of the uh, legalities of these contracts. So this is the time when you actually can look at your your contracts. You can look at your uh associations uh, legalities of your you can look at your trademarks for that matter you can actually go for because all the consultants and professionals are really working right now so you can always work offline and get these things done you have to determine resource interdependencies also of your of your business for example if you are depending too much on a supplier uh, can you have an alternate supplier can you actually make sure that this is the time where uh, the impact uh, you know you can reduce the impact when you resume the work then develop priorities and classification of business processes and and functions you can actually start working on that also develop recovery time requirements so for example if something goes down how much time you it used to come up you know for example if if there's a customer complaint uh, and you were supposed to uh, take care of the customer complaint about six months back how how you can actually better uh you know relate with that customer who actually has a complaint with your products and services you can go back and look at that also and also you can determine financial operational legal impact of disruption so uh, how this disruption how this crisis is impacting on your financial balance sheets uh your operational which is profit and loss 
uh, or the operational uh, management uh, operations of your organization and the legal impact of this disruption has to be reviewed. So these are some of the seven steps of uh, business impact assessment because I have worked with companies, large, mid-sized corporates and SMEs where I have helped more than, I have done about more than uh, 100 BIAs with different organizations. So I have this experience, out of experience, I'm telling you this is so important if you do it right now for future for, for, for future of you, because it's a constant, you know, you can do a business impact analysis uh, of your business. And this is the right moment to do that. You know, you don't have to wait for COVID-19 to, you know, complete and finish, and then you will start something like this. So this is something which you can, you can go to Google, you can actually understand what is BIA and create a BIA sheet for your business. This will really help you to uh, face these kind of uh, crises. And uh, quickly, I'm just sharing with you, uh, there are different uh, business continuity plans for these four outages. I'll just share one of them for your understanding that, for example, if there's a out site outage, like you're not able to go to factories, you're not going, uh, are able to go to the office, we are all working from home, we are under lockdown. So what are the recovery strategies and actions which we have to take right now? So first of all, uh, site outage means when you're not at the at the place of work now you're not at the factory you're not at the at the uh, at the go down or you're not at the office uh, so first of all you have to review your current assets like plant and machinery do you really need it can you can you outsource some part of it you have to review it so review current assets like plant and machinery review non-current assets like inventory uh, in your balance sheet there are two type of assets because balance sheet is all about asset and liabilities so you have to look at your assets and liabilities. You have to see that uh, the assets, the current assets and non-current assets are proportionally allocated and make sure that you don't have a personal asset there in the balance, balance sheet and make sure that you actually are lean organization. You have all the um, minimum inventories kept at your level. So you have to review these two things. Then reducing dependency on own premises. This is another thing, a new normal which we have, we have understood. Aaj aap dekh rahe ki bhoot sare businesses uh, offline chal rahe or uh, service industry majorly or even kuch manufacturing companies bhi jo hai wo uh, offline chal rahe hai wo bhi outsource karwa rahe hai or essential services mein unho ne ek dam switch karke or kuch na kuch something or the other they are trying to do. Then the adaptability is when we say adversity with adaptability, mitigating adversity with adaptability is to make sure that you get uh, digitalized, you get you come on the uh, digital platform you come on the you adopt some technology you if you are a manufacturing company think of adopting industry 4.0 practices uh, factories production service delivery system anything like you can hire or buy a crm for your uh, customer management uh, customer relationship management like email marketing and stuff like that so adopt adopt technology adopt some digitalization in your business that is another recovery strategy from the site outlet, which you can sit at home. Every employee, if you have 5, 10 employees or 50 employees or 500 employees, you can actually identify some people who can really help you with this. And then also adopt the competitiveness by making best use of MSME schemes. You are an SME, there are many lean manufacturing, Z. Uh, there are many schemes which are there, cluster uh, schemes, energy facility if you want to buy a calibration equipment up to five lakhs there's a subsidy by ministry of msm so there are there are there are plenty of subsidies and plenty of schemes which are there but most of the msmes complain that schemes so i would always uh, tell all the msmes uh, you know, take the advantage of this club, Exim Club, because I think Mr. Shah is a visionary. I think he can actually help you to connect with uh, the government and the government schemes where you can actually review and start reviewing how you can take best use of these schemes. So likewise, yes. yeah. So likewise, we have uh, personal outage uh, recovery strategies where we say that constant communication with employees, employee engagement by listening to them and supporting them emotionally, very important as a leader, releasing minimum wages now and compensation incentives later, employee training and development, you can do it on online, reinventing HR policies for future, respect skill sets of employees and teams. 
So these are some of the recovery strategies on the personal outage system so that you don't lose the best talent you have already acquired. Or if you if you want to interchange or interchange your uh, personal or maybe you can hire people, you can start interviewing them, you can shortlist them. This is the time to do all of this. So likewise, there are some recovery strategies for technology outage and supplier vendor outage as well. But let me just uh, come back to uh, the, uh, the another one. Uh, these are some of the high-level recovery strategies. I want to explain this a little bit because every business owner will understand what I'm saying. If you, are, if you don't understand, you can always come back to me later with question answers. I will answer you one by one. So first of all, first of all, what you need to do is you have to look at your investment decisions. Uh, you have to factor in returns, ROA, FAT, and ROCE. I will explain you that. So that so that you have the business uh, properties with no visible returns, cars and personal items which depreciate from day one are out. So you have to look at your balance sheet. You have to see how can you a lean organization in which we fixed assets, which are highly depreciating assets, you have to get out of your business. Number two. Uh, a contingency liquid fund needs to be created in the current asset section. This is the, I would say, this is the Ramban. This is something which you must do right now with your chart account and a financial expert. Because this opportunity of this crisis, which you have, you are experiencing, you will not get this opportunity again. And I don't hope that we get this kind of an opportunity. But this break is something where you can actually look at your last three years of balance sheet. Ideally, the fund should be able to run the uh, lean operation for 12 months, right? In the in case of uh, inward cash flows being zero, when inward cash flow is zero, like the situation right now, you should be able to run your business with a minimum cost, minimum for six to 12 months. If you are not ready for that, you are not into business. It's better to go and do, uh, go and work somewhere. You know, uh, get a job and work somewhere. So this is what I say that. यार एक महीने में एक डेढ़ महीने में हम लोग बिल्कुल चौक हो गए तो क्या बिजनेस कर रहे हैं तो हमें थोड़ा सा इस टाइम से कुछ सीखना है द थर्ड वन इज द कोलैटरल्स एंड सिक्योरिटीज अवेलेबल विद द प्रमोटर एंड द कंपनी हैव टू बी सेपरेट दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट स्ट्रेटजी व्हिच यू शुड वर्क ऑन राइट नाउ इनको अलग कर दीजिए आपका घर डेटर के पास बैंक में नहीं होना चाहिए मेक श्योर एंड इफ you can advise it to somebody else. Please advise somebody that don't put your personal assets. The business should be absolutely should 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 earn money for itself. Otherwise, it's not business. It's a liability. It's not an asset. If your business is not an asset, if it's a liability, there's no point in doing that business. The fourth one is the promoter has to work with logical people around. Advice from friends and family usually sing good businesses. If the promoter thinks like a small business, he shall certainly be remain one. So take an expert advice. Choose a mentor for yourself. Choose a business coach for yourself. And then make sure that you are a champion in every aspect. You're champion in marketing. You're champion in product uh, you know, uh, design. You're champion in sales. You're champion in digital marketing. You're champion in and and uh, import export your champion in everything so champions are not made uh, by asking friends and relatives how to work or maybe somebody who has failed multiple times you have to pick up and choose a right guru for yourself a good coach a mentor for yourself who can actually really he will charge you something but he will give you a right advice he will not flaunt with you he will not flirt with you he will actually give you a good advice and you will fall in love with him. That is a guarantee I can give you. The fifth one is that you have to uh, give some chance if you are a manufacturing company or you, even if you are not a manufacturing, the lean management systems have to be adopted. And you have to actually look at uh, the, 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 the lean system of, that means, what is lean? Lean means your uh, bottom line is, uh, which is basically your, your profitability goes up. Your... Uh, your top line, there, there are two things in, in, your, in your profit and loss. One is top line, one is bottom line. Top line is your revenue and bottom line is your, your profitability. So you have to choose, are you, are you going to increase your revenue or you are going to increase your profitability? 
depending on that, you have to make sure that your profit and loss statement looks like that. And there is something called return on assets. I will not get into the formulas, but this, these are very important formulas. I will, uh, uh, you know, I, I, from my side, uh, I will talk to SMB Connect, and then if we can share, if I can share this, uh, if you need, I can share this presentation also, probably later, so that you can take some clue from this. But ROA, which is on return on assets, is very important. This is one. Second is fixed asset turnover is very important. That means, जो आपके पास plant and machinery है, जो आपके पास fixed assets हैं, वो आपको कितना पैसा कमा के दे रही हैं? अगर वो पैसा नहीं कमा के दे रहा है, तो वो liability है. तो ये हमारा net sales divided by average net fixed assets हैं. ये fixed asset turnover formula है, जिसको हमें improve करना है. We have to improve. The third one is ROS. ROS is the most important. I love this formula, and this is a transformational formula. Return on capital employed. That means mm -hmm. financial ratio that measures yeah, profitability and efficiency with its capital is used. So this is ROS, which you have to work on. The reality is that we have to actually get ready for tomorrow. But what is important is that these are some of the challenges which we are going to face and we are facing right now. Number one, reduction in sales volume. It's almost zero now. It, probably we were thinking that probably 15 days, you know, in advance, much of light in next maybe 15 days or 30 days, nothing is going to happen. The next challenge is reduction in sales price and product price and service price. This is another challenge which we MSMEs are going to face. Delayed collection for customers from customers or increase in bad debt. It is also one of the areas because there are a lot of banks, there are a lot of institutions there are a lot of companies which are going to be npa if, if, if they are not able to pay their debts in time difficulty in managing working capital and fixed costs in business non-availability of funds from banks difficulty in planning and budgeting price of raw material will increase and will impact your margins reduced performance of employees due to risk of and uncertainty it's also going to be there now you can that's why i said the first objective is to maintain the productivity your own productivity and your people's productivity then difficulty in adoption of technology and difficulty in understanding government and tax regimes which are going to because these are dynamically changing for msme sector so what do we do what do we do friends so let me just because it's a one way communication uh, i'm sorry i cannot interject and ask you questions right now but let me just i'll take another 5 7 10 minutes to really explain you something which is very important uh, now we have to mitigate adapt, you know, this adversity with adaptability. So, as a business consultant, as a business coach, I would strongly recommend you please relook at your businesses. You may be a manufacturer, you may be a trader, you may be a service industry, you may be an import export person, you may be a raw material uh, supplier, you may be a you may be anybody. You know, you may be any business. So there are three objectives of uh, uh, making businesses. I call this as your business should be sellable, scalable, and sustainable. Sellable means, what does sellable mean? Uh, I ask a question to everyone that is your business an asset for you? What is the definition of asset? An asset is anything of value that can be converted into cash and is available to meet debts, commitments, and legacies. And legacy means that agar aapne kuch piche chhoda hi nahi, अगर आपने बिजनेस तो बनाया लेकिन आप अपने एम्प्लॉइज को सैलरी भी नहीं दे पा रहे हो तो वो बिजनेस नहीं तो आपको एक लेगेसी छोड़नी है आपको एक एक अपने पीछे कुछ छोड़ के जाना है तो वो क्या है लायबिलिटी छोड़ के नहीं जाना है एसेट छोड़ के जाना अपने बच्चों के लिए भी इफ यू आर गोइंग टू ट्रांस ट्रांस यू नो ट्रांसफर दिस बिजनेस टू योर योर नेक्स्ट जनरेशन व्हाट आर यू गोइंग टू गिव देम द डेट द ईएमआईज और यू आर गोइंग टू गिव देम समथिंग व्हिच दे कैन सेल एंड यू नो गेट सम मनी आउट ऑफ a business can be converted into cash by selling its shares to investors fully or partially. Considering the above definition of an asset, major majority of SMEs and MSMEs, especially in India, do not qualify an asset. This is my 15 years of experience with MSMEs that no MSME or maybe 99% of MSMEs are not in the asset class as a business. So please work on your businesses to make them asset class don't make your business as a liability for yourself and for others because as entrepreneurs you are not supposed to do that otherwise you are a you are just a self uh, you know you are an 
you are a, uh, i would say a, a, you know a, a solopreneur which actually you are actually just making and surviving from your business so that should not be the case now you know going forward uh, this is something which i always advise to everyone there are there are six there are six steps or maybe this is a journey of becoming a business becoming a saleable or maybe a, a, a scalable organization or uh, or an organization or a company which is basically you know sustainable organization so first of all friends uh, please look at the first thing which is the first step that what is your business model so you have to have a business model uh, which has to be scalable which has to be sustainable which has to be saleable somebody should for example if you ask me vinod can you invest in my company why should i buy why should your family members buy reliance shares and not your company shares why can't you sell your shares to me so it all depends on what kind of business model you have so first of all please look into it review it and see what your business model is all about there is a scientific way of restructuring and redesigning your business model that that's number one second is you have to have systems and processes in place you know it's very important if you don't have sops you don't have structures you don't have systems you don't have hierarchy you don't have documented systems and processes it's it's no way that you will be able to repeat and reproduce your daily work number 3 is disengagement disengagement is that promoter starts working on the business rather than getting into the business so you don't have to work in the business you have to work on the business that means that you are disengaging yourself and you are delegating everything to your teams so if you, there is somebody who is a technology guy you can actually delegate technology work to him production work to him what are you supposed to do you are a strategic head of your business and you will only keep where you your strength lies if you are a good marketer you just keep marketing with you rest everything is delegate don't try to get into everything disengage yourself from the business completely and be on it rather than in it number 4 is you have to do your capital restructuring i was just mentioning please relook at your in your in your balance sheet so that means current and capital assets are restructured to fresh capital to be infused easily so that a working capital you can go to the bank tell them that this is what i am i am credit worthy give me 1 crore rupees and they don't even think twice based on your sales figures based on your orders they give you some money so be so confident create uh, a structure in such a manner that any debtor any banker any investor would like to invest in your business the fifth one is the business plan for next 5 years i call this as a 1 3 5 rule so you have to have a 5 year 3 year and 1 year business plan in hand if you don't have a business plan for next 3 years probably you are wasting your time so business plan is very important and please refresh it every year and redo it every year because market changes competition changes product and services changes the, the the average time of your product and services is not more than 3 years to 4 years so you have to keep on changing it every year or every year or maybe every second year. the sixth one is that go to market that means finally the business creates a strategy to go to the market for part or complete sale you now you should be able to get some partners in it for example this is the time for merger acquisition for example you need some cash and you think that okay i can't run my business now it's very difficult there's no sales ask vinod pandita vinod pandita can you invest 50 lakhs in my company and i'll give you say 20% shares be like that get cash in your company uh, attract investors make sure that you are in the market where you are known as an asset this is very important so i hope this slide is clear to all of you because this is the adaptability this is where you have to actually jump now because you can't sit idle and probably just moan about the crisis you have to just go forward and help yourself to grow so this is the same thing i'm not get into the uh, details of this this is basically stage business six stage business journey which i have done a lot of work with uh, more than 100 smes and they have really shown results you know on 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 following these six steps uh, so what is saleability saleability is selling your business can be partial private equity or ipo or complete acquisition so this is the saleability model you know that your business should be should be saleability or should be saleable you should be able to really sell your shares 
scalability for your business to be saleable it must be scalable that means uh, it can be low low value high volume or high value low volume depending on what kind of business you are like you don't want I, i will not recommend you to become zomato all the time because they are also now completely shut down right now but create a business model which is scalable which you can actually reach out to more and more customers but if you are supplying to five customers in a year with a turnover of maybe 5 crores or 10 crores or 25 crores it's fine but then look at the other models also the business model which are scalable so that in these times you don't suffer sustainability is cost competitiveness through cost centric approach business excellence through operational efficiency tools and financial health through ratio analysis so all your ratio should be structured and your financial advisor or chartered accountant can help you with this so these are the three things so my last slide is that what are the future actions for msms so whether you are a, a manufacturer or a non manufacturer some of this may apply to you some of this may not apply we'll take up those in the question answer session but these are the 10 steps the future actions for msmes post lockdown or maybe you can start it right now one is inventory management number two minimize operational cost number three look at your mergers and acquisitions try to sell your shares or maybe acquire somebody else's share if you see some better business around the corner invest in them sell your business buy that business said because those are advanced companies store management you know you must be having uh, uh, something you know in lying in store like this is related with your inventory but you have to organize this time because you don't have any sale you can go back and you can restructure and redesign your so stores revamping reinventing or maybe uh, cost effectiveness you can get your energy saving options uh, you know solar uh, energy saving capacity capacitor increasing you know those kind of things you know you can look at you can also look at the maintenance and overhauling you can actually look at and restart designing your systems and processes start writing your procedures flow charts trying to see where your gaps are you can also start working on it infrastructure you can also start working on talent development you can also and you must work on steering your business strategy so these are some of the 10 immediate future actions for msmes friends which i think that if you take at least three out of them i'm not saying all of them three out of them you will be successful in managing the future in a more effective manner so thank you very much it was uh, a pleasure for me and i hope uh, that i was uh, useful and uh, you could understand uh, the the bottom line of my presentation when i say uh, business continuity that means we have to prepare for business continuity so that there is less amount of empty pod your your minimum or maximum time for disruption should be least so you have to be prepared for that so that at least you start doing some minimum uh, activities in the times of crisis in future i wish you all the best and now i would request sandeepan to take the question answers and uh, i will i'm there to to help you to answer all the questions okay thank you so much thanks a lot over to you sandeepan okay thank you mr vinod uh, uh, i'll just keep it mute so that i don't get dis there's no disturbance during the session uh, any anyway, so, so it was a really nice and informative session i am sure all the audience would have really liked it uh, we have one question as of now from mr yashwan shah He is asking in this new post-COVID-19 situation, what are the new skills and knowledge uh, small business, small and medium company? All right. See, number one, which comes onto my mind is that you should have you should have uh, absolute. Uh, you know, there's something called marketing skills. Marketing skills means now you cannot go to the market and you cannot meet the customer. So how do you reach out to the customer? So one of the topmost skills which you can learn is the CRM. You can actually you know these days uh, like for example there is a software called teleduce now teleduce is a software which is basically a crm software now you have to adopt new technology as i say so the the skill sets which you can learn is one is on the technology side and any skill which you try to adopt and, and learn should be either uh, specific to the customer or it should be specific to your people so either you learn something for your your own uh, production and your productivity or for your teams so crm is one and another is the management skills or maybe these kind of business continuity there are there are dozen of courses and dozen of skill sets you know which you can learn 
So this is what I can share right now, if, uh, unless and until there is something very specific. The next question we have is from Mr. Sanjeev Bose. He is asking, after COVID, what are the new line of businesses that a, a business should, an organization should look and uh, look for? Can you suggest some new line of businesses so that uh, they can move? Or... Yeah, very interesting question. I think uh, this is the need of an R. See, first of all, before before I tell you that what are those uh, those 38 uh, businesses which you should really look into because government has already released the list of 38 essential items in which even even your masks, face masks, as well as your uh, you know uh, you know medical equipments are also there. But I will not get into that. I will not because that's already available. What you need to do is you need to tweak your business model to 20 to 40 percent and see based on your your own strengths what else can you do around your business current business you don't have to transform 100 percent because that will that will cost you a lot of money and effort and probably you may not be very strong in that area so you don't have to copy and paste what you need to do is you need to just tweak a little bit and see in 30 40 percent times you know if you change your business model how you can adopt to the relevant market uh, place and see how you can tweak it. I'll give you an example. We have we have a, a, a company, um, you know, in in Haryana, they manufacture uh, packaging material, right? Now, the entire packaging material is shut down. There is no demand. There is no there is no no demand in the market. The kind of uh, uh, businesses they were catering. To. What they did, they actually talked to some of their customers, some of their customers, and they said. That can you prepare and can you create a you know non-woven cloth and give us the uh, packaging material or the raw material for this kind of uh, manufacturing of masks? Now they never they were never into it, but they had a machine. What they did, they actually bought the raw material, they bought the cloth from the market, and they did some bit of uh, you know treatment of that cloth, and then they started supplying instead of packaging material they started uh, uh, you know uh, giving them the the uh, woven cloth for the manufacturing of the masks now i'm saying they just tweak it a little bit and you will find and the, there are 38 items which are there in the list you can always google and you can find out what are those healthcare products essential items if you anything is related to your existing business you can switch so mr yashwan sir who is also the past president of eximperf have uh... Another question is, what about working on redesigning products, specification, or processes, and the use of technology for e-commerce, data analysis? And I also want to add on this, uh, you know, uh, right now we are all talking about uh, the challenge with cash inflow, cash flow being a challenge. What is your suggestion to invest on this kind of technology right now, or you have to wait for some time? Just, I'm just adding on this because this is again something which I, I get, get to know from a lot of uh, people because uh, challenges are there, there's a cash flow is there, business is not running, uh, sales is not happening, manufacturing is not there and people like you is coming and asking to invest on technology. So please add on with uh, the question from no. Mr. Yeshwin Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you for the question. See, first of all, uh, I would strongly recommend that please hold any investment for next three months. That's that's something which is a very uh, you know prudent decision going to be. But but start doing some research. Start looking at your business model. Start looking at your product design. Start looking at the market needs. You know for future because you know at this moment of time what you can do sitting at home. You can actually do research. You can do some kind of feasibility analysis. You can actually do some some kind of a research and development and you can actually say that okay this is a product which i'm going to invest in but yes as i said you know in my presentation also uh, if you have cash in hand if you if you have money you can plan for it but don't invest money right now like for example i'll give you a parallel example uh, so different there are there are a lot of investors right so a lot of uh, startups were saying that uh, you know, we were ready with everything. Now investors are not investing. But you know, you won't believe investors are looking for good business models and they are willing to invest. And they are they are they are sitting with plenty of cash. But right now, what is more important is 
that you have to introspect, you have to redesign your products and do some research on it, do some feasibility analysis. Three months, just wait for three months, probably things are going to change completely. Thanks, Mr. Vinod. Uh, Vijay, Mr. Vijay, do you have anything to add or, or do you have any questions to share? Anyhow, so Mr. Uh, 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 Yashwant has just pointed out that startup companies are having a different challenge because startup business and a small uh, or medium scale business, so MSME, as we say, are totally two different uh, uh, kind of setup organizations. They have different challenges. SMEs have different challenges because uh, SMEs are more of a sustainable businesses. Startup are more of scaling up, exponential growth. So they definitely have a two different uh, thought process, the different mindset. Uh, uh, you want to add anything on this, uh, Vinod? No, I, I, I would just you see. I have been, I have been working with MSMEs the last fifteen odd years now, and I must tell you one thing: there are, there are few things which MSMEs have to learn very quickly. Is that they have to actually become very agile. You know, they have to really think of uh, changing the, the way they do the business. See, sustainable business or maybe. Uh, you know, traditional way of doing business will always remain there because the customers are like that. You know, for example, if I am a auto ancillary and if I have to supply to Hero Honda or Honda Motors, I will be like that. I cannot be a scalable organization. But one thing I can definitely do, I can change my paradigm and try to create an asset out of my company. As I said, the normally the problem is that we always are dependent on banks. You know, see, there is something called debt and equity. If you don't have an equity, you have to find an equity partner. But don't always look for debt because debt is a killer. So I'm saying the MSMEs have to just change the paradigm from the debt side to equity side. So equity will only come when the investor wants to invest in your company. Trust me, for example, when I work with an organization as a consultant, you know, the kind of fee an Indian MSME can pay me for per man day is not enough for me because probably I charge X amount and they give me X divided by 10. So I tell them, okay, you give me, you give me an, you give me 1% of your stake, you know, equity in the company, say for example. Now they have not never done a valuation of their company. They don't know what is your share value at this point of time. You know, it's only in the books of account in, in a certain way. But then if you, if you want to really go for a real valuation and say, okay, I'm a 15 crore worth of company, that means if I want to sell five crores worth of shares, I will get a cash in hand five crores from outside. Okay, that's the only thing between startups. Okay, we are not like startups. MSMEs are not like startups, but we can think like them. No? There's nothing wrong in that. We can actually expand and we can actually grow like that also. Okay, now here is I hope that clear question from uh, Mr. Sanjeev. I think this is good. Uh, this is something which has been now coming up. Uh, in most of the discussions which we are having with uh, businesses, any opportunities uh, we will get in India in the coming future due to China problem with other countries. Now, this is an opportunity. This is uh, going on in m multiple WhatsApp uh, groups and other uh, discussions. How the Indian businesses can take the benefit due to the China problem? So, you've been meeting with a lot of uh, investors. You meet a lot of uh, uh, experts. So, maybe you could share some views on that. Yeah, sure, sure. I think I don't have. I have another presentation on that where I can. I could have shown you some some statistics. What India is going to uh, have probably after six months to one year. Uh, let me tell you, Germany, uh, Japan, and all these big European countries. They have taken their. They have taken a conscious decision to come out of China. That's that's for sure. And India, India. Indonesia and Vietnam. These are the three countries out of which India is on the top of the top of the chart right now for the manufacturing of sourcing of manufacturing. So electronic companies, healthcare, uh, you know, uh, big data analytics, uh, you know, uh, technologies. There are different kinds of technologies. Even defense. Everything is coming to India. Just wait and watch. It's a matter of time. I think if if this government is actually supportive of economic restructuring of our country. Uh, China is going to get a hit, though we are dependent on China largely. But I think we have to become 
because india is a service oriented organized you know uh, country we have to just get into a bit of design thinking and any organization today who is actually getting into design thinking and start designing some products and services in such a manner that you are you have patents with you uh, you know you will be you will be the leader in the manufacturing business in times to come so just wait i think manufacturing and lot of other things are coming to india and china we are dependent on china on many things so i think most of you must be aware but i think it's a matter of time we have a good future coming forward especially for msmes in manufacturing sector okay mr sanjeev has a follow up questions and he is asking any good news from government for msme after this covid 19 lockdown so i would like to just add and use uh, uh, this opportunity to promote uh, a session which we are going to happen uh, which i will be doing tomorrow where we have uh, the general manager from nsic uh, is coming and sharing how government is adding value or is adding uh, support to the msme community that will happen tomorrow at 3 o'clock uh, i can uh, share that link with all the people who attended so that they can uh, uh, if they are available they can join the session they can ask these questions to the uh, the respected uh, panelist of uh, nsic nsic apart from that we uh, at assembly kanad is also organizing a session on next friday uh, 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 where we will have a msme di uh, and sharing their views uh, how government is working with the msme so that are the two sessions uh, which has going to happen tomorrow and one is going to happen uh, next friday uh, just thought to share that so that uh, this kind of questions can be addressed uh, there uh, i think it's fine with vinod because to share this information apart from that i thought i should also share uh, uh, mr vinod and we are organizing a session on nine which is very specifically on cash management we're talking about the, the topic for that is finding cash and ensuring financial survival in the times of covid 19 so this is on 9th of may uh, if you are interested i can send this information also to all of you Uh, so that you guys can attend, uh, we will have apart from Mr. Vinod, we will have Gayatri uh, and we have Mr. Uh, Bhattacharya. So three of uh, uh, three specialist, uh, hardcore financial wizards who will share their views on managing uh, cash uh, 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 during this COVID situation. Uh, we have a comment from Mr. Yashwan Shah. Private equity is another problem of exit rule if it is a private limited company. So he has maybe have some instances where private equity investment uh, is not a good rule for uh, getting out of it. No, it all depends on the term sheets. You know, it all depends on how you are actually uh, building up the association with the private equity. See, private equity in the private limited, uh, you know, you have to you have to let go uh, some of your your part of your organization. So normally. as an indian entrepreneurs indian mindset people indian business owners don't have this mindset we normally are so uh, we are so uh, you know fond of our own organization so we don't want to let it go so i think an entrepreneur if you if you have to work like an entrepreneur you don't have to really get obsessed with your own organization or your business you can actually an entrepreneur is one who can actually build multiple businesses i am not saying that you don't have to be focused but the point is that private equity route if you have a successful exit it all depends on the term sheet it all depends on how you have set and offset the the contract documents you know and the and the term sheets with the investor or private equity partner it's basically for example if i want to have sandeepan in my company as a as an equity uh, partner so i i know that whether i want to give my i want to give my shares or i want to give my i want to give him a sweat equity at a certain value but for that my organization should be valued at some some moment or some some value so i think uh, exit route uh, should not be a problem this is my firm belief exit route should not be a problem it's only that your valuation should be strong your brand equity should be strong and you should be able to give away some portion of your business to the private equity part that's for so fine uh, mr vinod thank you very much i think we should time to wind it up uh, mr vijay with your permission i just uh, thought to wind it yeah. up right now with about 4 uh, minutes for the session so there are a few suggestions which came from mr yashwan mr kushal gandhi uh, uh, 
Mr. Yashwant is asking whether we can share this presentation. Yes, uh, this presentation video will be uh, ready yes. in a couple of days and will be uh, sent across uh, to, uh, to to the secretary or uh, secretariat office of Exim Club so that they can share across uh, to all the members. Uh, Mr. Koshal Gandhi was asking for the link for cash management session. I will have it sent across uh, to you guys uh, by, by, by my team so that you can directly join. You don't need to register for that uh, session. We have the details. So we will create that link and mail it across to you uh, for both tomorrow and uh, day after tomorrow's session uh, so that you can join uh, this assembly connected presentations with Mr. Bino. Uh, Sandeep, what I suggest, Sandeep, just announce about. Uh, our forthcoming uh, webinar tomorrow on this uh, NSIC and that. So tomorrow we have a session with uh, basically uh, the topic is handling business during the time of adversity and uncertainty. We have uh, uh, two speakers. One is Mr. Sanjay Nagi. He is a management, a renowned management consultant. And he's going to talk about the steps to be taken by businesses during uh, this uh, adversity. And we will have, we have Mr. Uh, Vijay Prakash, who is general manager from uh, NSIC, and he's going to share what government of India is doing. How, uh, uh, what are the different ways you can reach uh, NSIC uh, to, to, to take the various schemes they have uh, for businesses? So these are the two uh, key topics which we will discuss tomorrow. And as I told you earlier, is on 9th May is uh, we have a specific, very focused session on cash management during um, uh, this financial uh, and and. The topic is finding cash and ensuring financial service survival in the time of COVID-19. So, because cash is right now is is a challenge for most of the business, and so we have Mr. Vinod, uh, we have Mr. Gayatri, and we have Mr. Tacharya, three uh, specific people from the financial sector to share their views to manage cash during this time. That both the links, both the details, I will send across uh, to all the people who have attended today. So that they can uh, join uh, the sessions with us. So thank you very much. Uh, so it's a pleasure for us to organize this particular session. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Vijay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vinod, for uh, giving a very nice and a very crystal clear views about the how to recover and ad adopt this uh, today's world. See, basically, yes, we everyone knows it is a uh, very adverse uh, adversity is there. But I would like to say, just don't wait only for the government decision. Use and apply your own mind on setting up your own business. How to change or how to equip your business with that? Adopt the current situation and start thinking in a, some different way with a very positive notes on that. And I would like to say to my members that please maintain your health, stay safe, keep social distancing, think positive, act positive, and plan your office work in these difficult days in a such a systematic way that in a future to come, yes, we all are sure this kind of the difficult time may not be emerge again but as some senior members like what mr vikesh suggests and that see in 1956 majority people have faced this kind of the things in a past so we should be very well prepared even to sustain of say 30 days or 100 days as uh, mr vinod you have said we should plan our business in such a way that at least uh, we should sustain with our existing business and work in a such a manner that instead of uh, having a, this kind of a crucial time, we should not simply wait and watch only on the banking operation or on the other uh, uh, cash flows part. Whether it is a zero cash flow or not, we should sustain with our business for at least for a one year or two so our thinking and planning has to be based on that and creating a wealth according to that but to create the wealth don't forget your health what i mean to say is that health is the first thing in today's world if you have a good health all other things can be manageable
So Sandeepan, last thing, last thing I would like to say, my one of my slide uh, I would re-emphasize before we close is that survive, revive, and thrive. So revival is very important. So first survive and then revive your business, reinvent your business, and definitely you will thrive. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Shah. Yeah. Thank you so much to all. And uh, as uh, suggested by Mr. Sandeep, there is another webinar. Uh, by the same SMB group, uh, Sandeep on the similar way, uh, tomorrow we have on the similar time, it, it might be clashing with your time. Uh, we have a webinar arranged by this uh, Hajira Adani group on how this uh, Adani Hajira group is managing and uh, giving assistance to the export community uh, within this uh, jurisdiction. And uh, tomorrow their CEO is uh, coming on our exam platform for the same thing so certain our members will be joining on that and certain other members will be joining in your seminar we have already circulated that one and in addition to this uh, tomorrow's webinar i have kept one more uh, webinar day after tomorrow uh, it is to be pre presented by our own member on the very very good subject this is a pandemic, but not an endemic situation. This is the title of that webinar he has given. That's very good. I request you all to join in that. It is a very short presentation. I will just share a link to all and we'll do that. And thank you very much for organizing this platform. We owe with this SMB Connect uh, as an exit club. I thank you to your all the team members for uh, organizing in a such a nice way and that. Thanks and thanks. Thank you.